Chapter 61 Treed By the time I'm over the fence, Gull has spotted me. She trudges over, slow but determined, like an old woman longing for her grandchild's embrace. When we reach each other, I put my head on her neck. You should be in the barn, I say. I peer over her to see if Lou is outside. The sky is rich with stars, like fresh black dirt, sprinkled with tiny seeds. The moon hangs low. I cupped a cupped hand of silver water. Gull nudges me. I know this means that she wants an ear scratch, so I do as I'm told. Tears warm my cheeks. A door slams. I see Lou heading to the barn. I crouch low besides Gull. I don't want Lou to see me crying. She will be she will be coming to get Gull, and I must hide. The field is empty. There's nowhere to go but the big tree. I dash over and clamber up easily. It's a good climbing tree high in the tangle of branches. I watch the cars charge by like a herd of panicked animals. <clears throat> Gull looks up at me, wondering why her ear scratches over. She heads slowly in the direction of the tree. I wipe my nose on my sleeve. No, I say softly, go away, Gull. She settles in under the tree and stares up at me like a motherless puppy. I'm so high, I should have been able to see forever. In the starlight, I imagine that if I try hard enough, I can see my family's thatched hut, my father's sharp horned cattle, the tree where I learned. I'm not meant to be a bird. Go away, I whisper. I'm going to be here for a long time. Chapter 62 Ganwar. I have been in the tree forever when I hear a bus screech to a stop far across the field. I can just make out a tall figure climbing down the bus stairs. Ganwar leaps over the fence and strides across the field. He's heading toward the barn, but then he stops. He looks at Gull. He looks up into the branches of my tree and he laughs. Please don't tell me you're trying to fly again, he says. How did you find me here? I ask in a loud whisper. I woke up when you shut the door. I watched from out the window when you got on the bus, and I took the next one. Why, I demand. Ganwar shrugs. Don't know exactly, but it was worth it just to see you stuck up there. Using his good hand in one graceful move, he climbs up to join me. I don't want company, I say. He ignores me. So you're running away? I'm trying. Where to? Maybe I'm going home to find Mama. Ganwar nods. You think that's where she would want? She would want? It's what a man would do, I say. Ganwar rubs his chin. Hmm. What if she's already on her way here? I rub my eyes. Suddenly, I feel tired. If I lie back on this branch, I feel I could fall asleep for a week. I'm not used to making so many decisions. I'm not used to do used to so many changes. In my old world, I was just Keck, the silly boy. I was Lul's little brother, Ganwar's troublesome cousin, my parents' mischievous child. That was all, and that was enough. I sigh. There are too many hard things, I say softly. I can barely hear my own words. It isn't fair. I just want... I want everything I lost. Ganwar rubs the place where his hand should be. I look away. I don't want to think about what he has lost. Maybe I'll come with you, Ganwar says. No, I say firmly. You stay. But it will never be right for me here, Keck. I have this. He holds up his stump of an arm. And I have the gar. It's worse for me. I'll never fit in. If you're never going to give up, why should I? I don't answer him. But when I look at Ganwar's arm, I think of how he leapt into the tree like it was his only home and how he does all the work I do with just one good hand to help him. I remember something my mama used to say on dark days. If you can talk, you can sing. If you can walk, you can dance. Ganwar, I whisper, 
what if she never comes? What if it's only me? I can't do it all by myself. Ganwar sends me a sad smile. My cousin, he says, you already are. Chapter 63. Talk. I hear the church of someone walking. I hear the crunch of someone walking. Lou comes out of the barn. Gull, she calls. What are you up to, old girl? Slowly, Lou makes her way over. She follows Gull's gaze up into the tree. My, my, she says. This may be the first time in history a cow has treed two boys. We climb down slowly. When I get to the bottom, Gull nudges me again. She wants her ear scratched to continue. I force myself to meet Lou's eyes. Moonlight glints of her silver hair like ice on snow. I'm sorry, I say, for being angry with you. It isn't your fault about the farm. Lou smiles. Come on, you two. I could use a hand. We head toward the barn, and Gull follows. Kind yellow light spills from the house. Lou and Ganwar and I stand there in the silent barn, stroking Gull and waiting. After a while... I help Lou toss some fresh hay into Gull's stall. How'd you end up in my tree this evening? Lou finally asks. I don't want to say the truth, but when Lou looks right at you, you cannot make up stories. I'm running away, I say. I see. Lou thinks about this for a moment. Want a cookie before you go? I think, too. A cookie would be, would not be such a bad thing. Chocolate, I ask? Yep. I follow Lou and Ganwar into the house. It might be a long time before I see chocolate again.